The Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka. Adapted by Peter Cooper. Section 1. When Gregor Samsa awoke one morning from disturbing dreams, he found himself transformed. It was no dream. What, what happened to me? How about if I go back to sleep for a bit and forget this prank? But that question, but that was out of the question. Gregor was used to sleeping on his right side, and in his present condition, it was impossible to get into that position. Oh Lord, what an exhausting job I've chosen, being a traveling salesman. Day after day, it's the same story. All the pressures of travel, worrying about train connections, eating miserable food on the run. A parade of new faces with no lasting relationships or greater intimacy. The hell was it all? This getting up so early makes anyone function like an idiot. A man needs his sleep. Other traveling salesmen live like harem women. For instance, when I get back to the hotel to write up the orders I've taken that morning, these fellows are just sitting down to have breakfast. If I tried pulling that with my boss, he'd fire me on the spot. Ah, uh, if it weren't for my parents' predicament, I'd have quit long ago. Especially given, given the disturbing way the boss sits high on his desk and talks down to his employees. By now, I would have marched into his office and given him a piece of my mind from the bottom of my heart. That would have knocked him off his desk. Oh, well, I haven't given up all hope yet. Once I've gotten the money to pay off my parents' debt to him in five or six years at most, I'll certainly do it. Then I'll cut myself free. In the meantime, I better get up if I'm going to catch my 5 a.m. train. Good Lord. Could it be that somehow the alarm hadn't gone off? It was correctly said that you could see. Then it must have gone off. Could he have slept peacefully through an ear-splitting ring that made furniture shake? So what What should he do now? The next train left at 7 o'clock. To catch that, he'd have to run like mad. And he wasn't feeling particularly fresh. What if he were to call in sick? But that would be quite awkward and suspicious, since Gregor had not been ill once in the last five years uh, on the job. The boss would no doubt show up with a health insurance doctor and use his diagnosis to dismiss all excuses and blame Gregor's parents for their son's laziness. Gregor? Gregor, it's a quarter to seven. Aren't you planning to catch your train? Yes, yes, mother. I'm just getting out. Gregor was shocked to hear his own voice, unmistakably his own, but with a horrible twittering squeak that garbled every word. The change in Gregor's voice must have, must have been muffled by the wooden door, because his mother was reassured and shuffled off. However, their little exchange made his father and sister aware that Gregor had not, as they assumed, left for work. Gregor! Gregor! What's going on? Gregor! Gregor, it's Greta. Are you alright? Do you need anything? Please, Gregor, open the door. I'm just ready. But Gregor had no intention of unlocking the door, and felt thankful for the habit he had acquired as a traveling salesman of bolting it at night, even when he was at home. Certain that the change in his voice was merely the first sign of a bad cold, Gregor decided to get up, get dressed, and most important, have a good breakfast. First he tried to arise by moving the lower part of his body, but this proved to be too sensitive. Then he tried moving his upper body, but then he feared if he fell, it would take a miracle not to injure his head. Back where he started, he lay there, expecting perhaps everything would simply return to normal. I can't just lie here being useless. Ding! Before the clock strikes 7.15, I'll be up and out. Ring! Ring! It's someone from work, I'm certain. Maybe no one will answer the door. Good morning, madam. I'm looking for Gregor Semsa. I'm the chief clerk at his thump. He never have missed his train, but he's not feeling well. Gregor, come out. The chief clerk is here to see you. 
There's some, so please open this door at once. No! Herr Samsa, this behavior is shocking. I must demand an immediate explanation. I am an astonished. Astonished? I thought you were a reasonable person. I plan to say this in private, but you have given me no choice. On behalf of your employer, I must tell you, your performance at work has been most unsatisfactory, and your job is not at all secure. Please, sir, I just had a bit of a dozen spell, but I'm fine now. I should have mentioned I felt off yesterday. Never mind, I'm well now, and I'll catch the 8 o'clock train. Do let the boss know and send my deepest apologies. Did you understand a word he said? He sounded like an animal. He's not trying to make fools of us, is he? Greta, Greta, fetch a locksmith at once. My god, what if he's seriously ill? We should call a doctor. No need for the locksmith after all. Well, at about time... Oh. Just give me a moment to get dressed and pack my samples. I'll be ready to go. Gregor knew if the manager left in this mood, it would seriously jeopardize his job. I know I'm in a tough spot. But I'll work my way out. Please, sir, don't go just yet. His parents didn't understand this. They were too preoccupied with their own immediate troubles. Help, for God's sake, help! Where was his sister Greta? She could have detained the man. He'd have listened to her. Gregor squeezed past his bedroom door and falling in onto his many legs felt a physical well-being he hadn't felt all morning. With his feet firmly planted on the ground, he believed that final relief from all his bodily suffering was at hand. Please don't make things harder than they already are. Do you remember my past accomplishments? I know everyone thinks traveling salesmen have it easy, but you know that's not true. Bump. Don't leave without acknowledging I'm at least partly right. Ah. Shoo. Slam. End of section one.